I've got my hands on a keyboard that I think you guys will be really intrigued by. This is the Ebomaker TH100, offering premium build quality with a unique finish. Could this be my new favorite keyboard? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. For this video, we're going to be taking a look at a mechanical keyboard from Epomaker known as the TH100. Currently, this keyboard retails for about 180 US on Epomaker's website and AliExpress, so that should give you an idea of what to expect as we go through this review of the board. Now, this sample I got was sent over from them for a review, but all my thoughts and opinions of the board are mine and mine alone. To start off, I just wanted to do a quick unboxing of the keyboard to show you guys what you get along with it. The keyboard comes inside a fairly plain green box. There's not much going on with the packaging, it doesn't have any actual pictures of the keyboard, the back just has a small list of features and info about the company. Opening up the box and I was really glad to see how much packaging foam was inside. This is how it's done, and I mean at this price point that's what you should be expecting, but you can always appreciate the safety. Moving the top layer of foam reveals a large microfiber cloth included, which I guess you can use to clean the keycaps, but there are more thorough ways to clean the board, but nonetheless this is also a appreciated. You also get a manual for some info on shortcuts and operation. Along with that, you also get a keycap and switch puller. Considering this is a keyboard that's also targeted towards people who will be modding their boards, that's convenient to have. A nice wide braided USB Type-C to Type-A cable with gold-plated contacts. And finally, we have the keyboard itself which comes wrapped in a plastic sleeve. And that's about it. Next, I wanted to talk about the design of the keyboard, the build quality, and the aesthetics. The TH100 is utilizing a compact 1800 layout for its design, also known as the 100 key layout. This is a layout that I really like because it essentially delivers the experience of a full-size keyboard while having a 15% smaller footprint. That's great because if you have limited desk space, then that can come in handy for sure. As someone who still needs a number pad but doesn't want a large bulky keyboard on their desk, this is the best of both worlds. At this point, with all the other compact keyboards that I've tried out that still retain a number pad, I see zero reasons to go back to a full-size board. How they managed to attain this design is quite straightforward. All they have done is they've eliminated the excess spacing between the number pad, F row and arrow keys. Most of the navigation keys have been placed right above the number pad where usually that space is empty. Along with that, larger keys like right control, function, and alt have been downsized. It's a very effective design because after using this board and other keyboards that have similar layout, I will never go back to using a full size keyboard. If there was one thing I wish they had included, that would be a volume knob or wheel somewhere along the sides. I've been using my RK96 as my daily driver for almost a year and that board has a volume wheel which I didn't didn't realize how much I'd actually miss until I started using the TH100. To change the volume with this keyboard, you have to hold down the function key with your right hand, and then with your left hand press F2 to raise the volume, F3 to lower it, and F4 is for mute. Really odd placement because you can't even one hand it. I would have integrated the volume function in the plus and minus key instead. Moving on to build quality, the TH100 sure delivers in this department. It's built like a tank. This keyboard has its case made out of CNC aluminum, and I gotta say it feels feels really premium. It has a super solid feeling, there's zero flex, and it's robust. It doesn't feel cheap at all, and when it comes to typing, I gotta say the experience was fantastic, but we'll talk more about that in just a moment. Due to time constraints, I didn't have a chance to do a full teardown of the board, but there is sound dampening foam between the plate and PCB, and they claim that there is foam at the bottom of the case as well. The inclusion of sound dampening foam, especially at this price point, is something I would have expected anyways, and the benefits are that it reduces the hollow feedback from the keyboard, greatly reduces or eliminates case ping, and greatly improves the sound as well. In this case, pun intended, there was no pinginess as far as I could tell, and that's coming from someone who types quite aggressively on the keyboard. As for dimensions, when you think about CNC aluminum, you might imagine a large bulky case, but for the TH100, it does not hold those characteristics. It's actually quite sleek and minimalistic. In regards to dimensions, we're looking at 127mm in terms of length, 375mm for its width, and 51mm in terms of thickness. So it's not really that large, but it's obviously not as portable as a keyboard that could be using an 84 key layout. However, one thing you do have to be mindful of is that because of the aluminum case, it's very heavy. Weighing 1.7 kilograms, this is by far the heaviest keyboard I've ever used, so that could be what deters people from treating it as a quote unquote portable board. But due to its heavy weight, this does make it very stable. Another thing I was hoping they would have included, especially at this price point, was a wrist rest. 
For me personally, typing with a wrist rest goes a long way, as it helps immensely with reducing fatigue and improving comfortability. As for aesthetics, the TH100 has a pretty unique look, but it's not something that I'd call overly tacky or anything. The version I received has a metallic white finish to it, with a slightly grayish hue. From the pictures I saw online, they kind of made it seem like the case's finish was more of a vibrant snowy white, but that's definitely not accurate. On the sides we have a striped finish, and this board has separate LEDs on the sides that shine through. I think they add a nice touch to the overall look. Speaking of LEDs, the keyboard does have RGB. You can customize the way this board looks using the keyboard shortcuts, utilizing its various effects and colors. However, if you are hoping for a more in-depth customization, you'll be left disappointed because they don't have any compatible software for it, and I couldn't find any mention of it on the product page. Personally, I don't care because I generally just choose one color and leave it that way, but if you were hoping for some kind of in-depth customization through software, you're probably gonna have to look elsewhere. The other thing that I was disappointed by was the fact that there's no dedicated white LED, and so if you want white backlighting, the keyboard just lights up all of its LEDs, which makes it give off a whitish, purplish hue, and that kind of looks cheap. On the plus side, the lighting effects are very profound, and that's thanks to the keycaps. The TH100 comes with these transparent keycaps that are polycarbonate, and utilize a digital printing process, so you don't have to worry about the letters or numbers becoming faded. This is the first time I've dealt with a keyboard that uses completely clear keycaps. I think aesthetically they look great, especially in combination with lighting effects. The clear design makes it seem like you have a keyboard that is using glass keycaps. It's really unique. However, when it comes to functionality, they are a little bit hard to get used to, because they do give off some glare, and sometimes I've seen myself misreading some legends or keys. The other downside to using clear glossy keycaps is that they can get dirty easily, so that's probably why they've included that microfiber cloth. Let's talk about the installed switches that this keyboard is using. The TH100 ships with Holy Panda replica switches made by MMD. These are a tactile switch with what I'd call is a heavy operating force. Now I'm someone who prefers linear switches, and for my personal keyboard, I use a linear switch with an operating force of 62 grams. However, because because the bump on these switches is so profound, it makes them feel much heavier. For typing, they feel pretty good, but it's not a switch I'd recommend for gaming. The switch uses a palm stem with a polycarbonate and nylon housing, making them durable. They have an MX structure, so they are compatible with a wide variety of keycaps on the market. As for specs, they have an end force of 62 grams, total travel of 3.6 millimeters, and pre-travel of 1.8 millimeters. I did also notice that these keycaps have noticeable wobble, and they would benefit from filming. The switches also don't come factory lubed, which when you buy them separately is normal, however, I was hoping they would have lubed them slightly for this board given its high price point. There is noticeable scratchiness, but little to no pinginess. This keyboard's PCB is hot swappable and supports 3 and 5 pin switches, making it compatible with tons of aftermarket options. I'm personally thinking about swapping out the switches for something a little bit lighter. As for the stabilizers, they do come factory lubed, which is a plus, and they don't have a lot of rattle, but I think using the Band-Aid mod could alleviate that. If you are wondering how this keyboard sounds, then here is a quick typing test. After hearing the typing test, the keyboard has more of a clacky and high-pitched sound profile as opposed to a deep, thocky one. I'm sure if I did the tape mod, then I could probably change that, but I don't think I'm going to. I kind of like the way this keyboard sounds as it is. The spacebar, however, sounds pretty hollow. I'm not sure exactly why, but it might be because of the type of material it's made out of. I did notice it's not as thick as some of the double shot PBT space parts I'm used to using, so that's probably why. It also could be because the spacebar wire needs to be rebalanced, but overall it sounds decent and I don't really have many complaints here. Now the previous keyboard I reviewed from Apple Maker was the JJK84, and its biggest flaw was that it didn't have N key rollover, which was a huge deal breaker. However, that's not the case for the TH100, as it fully supports NKRO, and you can use whatever combination of keyboards you like without having to worry about ghosting. 
Turning the keyboard around and at the bottom we can see that there are four upraised feet to help the keyboard stay in place and provide more stability, not that it probably needs it considering how heavy it is. You might have noticed that there are no kick feet stands as well and usually that would be a deal breaker for me, but because this keyboard is using such a thick case and it's angled from the back due to being thicker there, it basically feels like I'm typing on a board that has the kick feet stand out. There's definitely a noticeable tilt here which is helpful. There's also a toggle switch at the bottom and a USB dongle. This board supports three methods of connectivity, USB-C wired, Bluetooth 5.0, and 2.4 GHz wireless, making it very versatile. So all in all, if you're looking for a keyboard that offers premium build quality, is mod friendly, sounds fantastic, and aesthetically looks eye-catching, then the TH100 from Epo Maker is a keyboard I highly suggest checking out. To answer my question from the beginning of the video, I think I will probably end up using this keyboard as my work board, which involves a lot of typing, but probably not for my personal system as I need a board that's good for gaming. If you're interested in picking one up, I'll have some links down in the video description. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.